we eventually learned the reason for the hijacking. Sam Nelson took charge of the situation, dealt with it head-on, and used his bargaining talents to gain the upper hand against the hijackers. Sam was able to accomplish far more than what the entire counterterrorism wing was able to do, and it wouldn't be inaccurate to state that he became the difference between life and death for the passengers. Since the beginning, Sam has always been one step ahead, and he has confidence in himself, which keeps him calm even in the most stressful circumstances. So, let's find out what happened in hijack season finale, and if Sam Nelson was able to save the lives of all the passengers aboard. Just let you know this video contains spoilers. As they sat together and attempted to figure out how to handle the situation at hand, each and every British official's level of tension was evident from their horrified expressions. The Home Secretary, Neil Walsh, had begun to consider the prospect that they would have to shoot the jet down, but Louise, the foreign minister, was adamantly against. Even though she didn't know what the hijacker's likely motive would be if they decided to crash the plane, she was not prepared to let her people perish. They were informed by Alice Sinclair that the aircraft had altered its route once more and was most likely to crash or land in the heart of London. Neil Walsh told Louise that he would take the fall for it if anything went wrong, but she had to agree that they would have to shoot the plane because, for him, the picture was very clear and it was the lives of 216 passengers against the hundreds of people staying in central London. Neil Walsh knew that he would have to bear the consequences of letting two of the most wanted criminals go free, but if the citizens were also killed, then matters would get worse. Neil was actually not wrong here, as it was a huge gamble, but Louise just couldn't overlook what her conscience was telling her. For a moment, it felt like Louise would give in, but at the very last moment, she had a change of heart, and she decided that no matter what anybody said, she would not give up hope and would fight till the very last moment, even if it put her entire career in jeopardy. Louise told the Prime Minister that they were trying to negotiate with the hijackers and were not going to shoot them down. Meanwhile, we got to know what the terrorists, Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown, were up to. Neil Walsh and Louise were informed by the intelligence agency officials that the intention of the terrorists was not exactly to hijack the plane, but they were trying to achieve something very different. The terrorists were trying to deploy an unscrupulous strategy, which in the financial world was known as a bear raid. They had hijacked the plane so that the share prices of Kingdom Airlines started dipping, and they knew that once they had reached their lowest, they would buy shares and earn huge amounts of money in a quick time. The terrorists were supposed to inform Amanda, the pilot, to make a safe landing once they had completed the deal. Edgar Jansen, however, had other ideas. He wanted to push things to the very edge and wait until the stock prices were at their lowest. He was aware that their profit would increase as the share prices dropped. John Bailey disagreed with this and warned Edgar that by being greedy, he was incurring unnecessary risks. Edgar was far too obstinate to give in and pay attention to John Bailey, his goal was to bring the plane down and get the most money possible. That's when John Bailey decided that it was best for them to kill Edgar and end the hassle. John told his henchman to shoot Edgar, and in a split second, Edgar Jansen was lying on the ground in a pool of blood. We don't know where John went after that or why he only targeted Kingdom Airlines, and probably these questions would be dealt with in Hijack Season 2 if there is one. How did Daniel save Kai? Daniel, in the sixth episode of The Hijack, realized that these terrorists and hijackers were very dangerous people and were capable of taking extreme measures to make sure that their plan was a success. After Edgar and John tricked him and went their way, he once again gave a call to Zara Gafur and told her to follow their instructions because they were quite capable of crashing the plane. Daniel called Marcia and intuitively asked her if anything suspicious had happened to her in the past couple of days. Marcia suddenly remembered that she had gotten a call from a delivery man who was asking her about Sam's address. Daniel knew that something was not right, and he got even more paranoid when he realized that Kai, Marcia's son, was in Sam's house at that moment. At the time that Daniel called Kai, the terrorist's guys had Kai's head under gunpoint. In the previous hijack episode, Kai was able to alert the authorities to the fact that two guys had broken into his father's home and that he was in danger of losing his life. 
The hired shooters were able to handle the issue when the police arrived and convinced the officer that nothing was wrong. Kai was terrified and unsure of what to do once one of them caught him. When Kai and Daniel were on the phone, he understood that he needed to send Daniel some sort of signal that would let him know he was in danger. With his entire cavalry at Sam's residence, Daniel captured the two hired shooters. Prior to apprehending the cleaners, Zara called Daniel and expressed her concerns about Sam Nelson's possible involvement in the hijacking. However, Daniel reassured her that Sam was innocent because his family was also a target. As much as we would like to believe that Sam Nelson was the hero who saved those passengers, Zara's mistrust could not yet be dispelled because there was a lot of mystery around what Sam actually did in real life. Probably, if there was a season two, the curtain would be opened. Sam was aware that he needed to enter the cockpit to persuade Amanda to make the right decision and make the landing. Sam Nelson was a skilled negotiator, and it was intriguing to watch him virtually force individuals to comply with his demands. He made extremely apparent decisions, but they ended up working out well. In order for Amanda to read the messages and alter her decision, Sam began writing them on pieces of paper and placing them in front of the camera screen. He learned that Amanda had a daughter through her phone and that she was acting in accordance with the terrorists' commands because they had threatened to murder her if she didn't. Sam got to know that there was another man on board named Alec, who was told by the terrorists to bring a weapon on the plane, and he was the one who had also helped them in some manner with the entire deal. Alec claimed that it was simply done for financial gain, and that they were to inform Amanda to land safely, as soon as the bear raid was completed. When Sam was in contact with Alice Sinclair at the air traffic control tower, she gave him her word that she would prevent the authorities from shooting down the aircraft and ensure that they landed safely. Amanda was persuaded to let Sam into the cockpit by Sam. Sam asked Alice for directions as soon as he was inside, and the two of them worked together to determine where they could land. The plane was out of fuel, and there were a lot of other technical issues that made Sam realize that the odds were not in their favor. There was tension in the air, but Sam and Amanda kept their nerves in check and were able to pull off an impossible task and land the plane safely. The passengers took a huge sigh of relief, and the nightmare was finally over. Tears of joy could be seen rolling from everyone's eyes because they knew that they had actually escaped death. Sam forgot a parcel in the cabin, and he went back to take it, which was probably the worst thing he could do. Stuart, the hijacker, had been waiting for him with a loaded gun in his hand. Stuart had resigned himself to his fate, and he knew that he would have to bear the consequences of his actions. His brother had died, and after going through so much, he had lost the will to live. Stuart chased Sam with the intent of putting a bullet in him, but he couldn't. Stuart was defeated by the astute negotiator, and as hijack came to a close, the commandos entered and took control of the situation. Sam Nelson was still alive, and it wouldn't be inaccurate to argue that if he hadn't been, a lot of things would have turned out differently, and the passengers might not have survived. We still don't know a lot about Sam, so it wouldn't surprise us if we learned anything in the second season of Hijack, if the show's creators decide to do so, that drastically altered the dynamics of the scenario.